O oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is, is a great God and a great King above all gods. Let us pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we, we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The collect for the twelfth Sunday after Pentecost. Help us, O Lord, to receive with faith your life-giving word, so that it may take root in our hearts and bear fruits in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson has been taken from Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented for, of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Here ends the Old Testament lesson.
The epistle reading is taken from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Here ends the epistle reading. Shall we all stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9 and verses 18 to 23. Jesus went out and sat beside the sea, and great crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat there, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they had not much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell upon thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good ground and brought forth grains, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Then he said, Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. That is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the delight in riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is he who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of Christ. Oh uh -huh. 
us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We welcome all of you to this morning worship service as we observe the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. We continue to pray for the sick of our parish. May the Lord God grant all of them a very speedy recovery. We will request all our parishioners, those who have not paid their subscription, to kindly pay their subscription. You are requested to pay your subscription online. The details of our church account can be found in our website or in our WhatsApp group. We would like to inform all our parishioners in case you are not able to come to church on Sunday due to the lockdown then every Wednesday we will be having a small service along with the Holy Communion from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. where you can come to the church say your individual prayers and receive the Holy Communion all old people who are unable to come to church, you are requested to please let us know if you want to receive Holy Communion in your home. The Diocese of Jabalpur is celebrating 50 years of its glorious existence and on this occasion the Diocese of Jabalpur is going to publish a souvenir. If anybody is interested in giving family greetings in this souvenir, you are requested to contact us as soon as possible. Next Sunday, that is 30th of August, we will be celebrating Teachers Sunday. The worship service will be led by the teachers of our parish. Most of us know that 5th of September is celebrated as Teachers Day and the first Sunday of September will be 6th of September. So we will be celebrating our Teacher's Day on the 30th of August. The following celebrate their birthdays during this week. Mrs. Ruba Bernard, Mrs. Priyanka Job, Mr. Kevin G, Mr. Jesse Joseph, Ahan Ashish Bernard, Jonathan Tangadurai, Mrs. Samantha Rashtin, Mr. Shiraj Thomas and Dr. Mrs. Ekta Matthew. We wish each one of you a very happy birthday with God's blessing. Let us pray for all those who will be celebrating their birthdays during this week. And let us also pray for our country, our city Jabalpur and for the world. God our loving Father, we are really grateful to you for this wonderful time which you have given to us. Where once again, Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for all the wonderful gifts which you have bestowed on us. We know, Lord Jesus, that we are living in times where so many problems are creeping in, especially when we hear about the COVID patient, when we hear about this coronavirus, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless all those who are in the hospitals. At the same time, we also pray for all the doctors and the nurses, those who are taking care of these patients. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to bless all of us, take care of us, be a guide and companion, protect us from all evil, harm and danger, and be a guide and strength so that we may all be protected from this coronavirus 
and may be safe under your care and protection. We once again pray for our church, our parishioners, be with all of them and bless them and guide them. We also specially pray for all those who will be celebrating their birthdays during this week. Bless them, O Lord, so that they may have many more blessings in the coming year. Bless them so that they may be protected under your care. And bless them, Lord Jesus, so that they may have an everlasting relationship with you all the days of their life. Once again, committing all of us into loving hands. We ask this prayer in your holy and matchless name. Amen. Our speaker for today is Reverend Shubh. And before he shares the word of God with us, let us go into the time of praise and worship. Before we go into the meditation, let us prepare our hearts. The theme for today is the fruitfulness of the gospel depends on how it is received. So let us open the doors of our hearts and worship the immortal king. As Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 says rejoice in the Lord always. So let us sing rejoice in the Lord always. Verse 4 and 5 says, Come unto his gates with thanksgiving. Let us sing, I will enter his gates. The greatest things in all my life is knowing you. As Jeremiah chapter 24 verse 7 says, I will give the heart to know that I am the Lord. So let us sing. The greatest things in all my life. Hey! 
Greetings to you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I praise God for this time that God has given to us to spend our time in His presence and to listen to His word. Before we hear the word of God, let us bow down our heads and look to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this time that which you have given to us to spend our time in your presence. Lord, we thank you for all the manifold blessings which you bestowed on our lives. As we are going to meditate upon your word, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The theme for our meditation is the fruitfulness of the gospel depends on how it is received. I repeat, the fruitfulness of the gospel depends on how it is received. Once a tree plant was plant, planted on the ground, in order to grow the plant must suck the water and receive the sunshine. Until the plant perceives the things it cannot grow healthily. Here the Gospel of Matthew indicates a story of the parable of the sower. The parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. The parable opens a man's mind and eyes by beginning from where he is and leading him on to where he ought to be. In this passage, Jesus is identified as an effective teacher. He has a unique ability to take scenes from everyday life and use them to teach profound spiritual truths. Jesus began his teaching on the parable of the sower. A large crowd gathered around him on the beach, so got into a boat and sat down and talking from there, he is speaking about a man taking seeds into a field and casting the seeds upon the earth. The seeds fell upon the ground and landed upon different types of soils. Some of the seeds brought forth fruit, other seeds do not. Jesus used this common story to teach those who hear him about the condition of the human heart. Here we see that the sower is the Holy Spirit. The seed is the gospel of grace, and the soil is the human heart. Basing upon this text, we can draw out some of the valuable insights. The first point, the plan of the sower. The sower goes into his field with the intention of raising a crop and gleaning a harvest. He expects to reap a profit from the crop he is sowing. The best example is that our Lord God who sent his son into the world to die and he sends his spirit into the world to convict lost people of their sins so that he might reap a spiritual harvest to the glory of his name. In John chapter 16 verse 8, here the plan of the sower is to save the lost, he is all for his glory. He is the planner for everything. His purpose is to save the lost. The second point is the potential of the seed. Every seed that was sown by the sower had the potential to produce much harvest. One little seed has the potential to multiply itself 30%, 60%, and 100%. That is, the seed has the potential 
to reproduce itself many times over. Such is the seed of the gospel of grace. When it is sown in ready heart, it will germinate and reproduce itself over and over again. The seed has the potential to begin small and to produce much. It is worth noting that the seed always the changes the ground in which it is planted. When the seed of the gospel finds a lodging place in a heart that has been ploughed by the word of God and tilled by the grace of God, it will germinate and leave that heart forever changed a producing harvest of spiritual fruit to the glory of God. The third point is the problem of the soils or we can say the condition of the listeners or hearers. As the sower sows his seed, it fell upon four distinct kind of soils. The condition of the soil determines its potential for producing a suitable harvest. The seed fall on a four different places such as the roadside, the stony soil, the thorny soil and the good soil. The people were not attentive to take the words into their hearts. They were refusal to hear the words of God and they are not accepted or perceive the things which are hidden treasures of their lives. Here Jesus goes on to instruct to perceive truth instead of just seeing and hearing. In all these conditions, Jesus brings a word of gospel to them by sharing the parable of the sower. When Jesus began to say the parable, the disciples of Jesus came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? Jesus replies that the kingdom has come, yet it has come in a secret or veiled from that does not overcome the present order of things. Only people of faith and commitment are given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God now manifested on earth. Therefore, there are people who, though they hear the parables, do not understand them and perhaps also do not want to understand them because they do not have no prior commitment to do the will of God. They do not hear when they should be hearing the word of God. Here the emphasis stresses that having a firm commitment and following God's will and obeying the word of God so that we will be given the salvation and fullness of life. We are granted God's comfort and strength when we make a firm commitment to follow God's will in our lives. Jesus says, our heart should be like a good soil which bring forth the result 30%, 60% and 100% of false. If we are not doing what we know God wants us to do, we are certainly spiritual slackers. In fact, when we refuse to obey God, we are sinning. There is a quotation from Cindy Hess Casper when we know what God wants us to do, but then we refuse to obey, we are ignoring the voice of the Lord and sinfully choosing our way. Listen to these challenging and convicting words from the book of James, chapter 4, verse 17. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it is sin. Let's not be spiritual slakers. Let us overcome all forces of sin. Let us be ready to hear the word of God and believe it. Let us deny ourselves and relying upon the strength of God. Let us be lightened by the word of God by putting it to practice. Let us perceive the truth from the depth of our heart. Then the result he will guide, lead and protect 
and supply all the things from above, whatever we are required. This is the teaching of Jesus, who wants to show his hidden treasures of kingdom, those who believe in him. Let us thank God for giving us his word, and let us resolve to keep our hearts receptive to it. Let us ask ourselves, am I one who carefully listens to what God has to say to me? Or am I like the people in the gospel who, though they have ears, do not hear? As Psalm 37 verse 5 says, Commit your way to the Lord and trust in him and he will act. May God bless us and use us for his glory. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this time and we thank you for your word that you brought to us. Lord, help us to follow you and rely on you. Dear God, help us to receive your teachings well so that we may bear fruit for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. intercession let us join our prayers for the whole human family with the unceasing prayer of Christ the Lord Heavenly Father we pray for justice and peace in the whole world and for fullness of life for everyone Lord in your mercy hear our prayer for all who live in this place for the removal of all that divides us from each other and for true harmony in our country Lord in your mercy for all engaged in agriculture, industry and commerce, for all workers skilled and unskilled, and for all those who defend our country, Lord, in your mercy. For teachers and students, scientists, artists and writers, and for all who influence the minds and hearts of others, Lord, in your mercy. For those who are suffering, the poor and hungry, the destitute and oppressed, the unemployed, the sick and the dying. Especially be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. Take away the fear, anxiety and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to the disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. Lord, in your mercy. For all to whom authority is interested in this and other countries, and especially for our president, the prime minister, the governor and chief minister of this state, and for all who have power over other people. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, for the unity of all Christian people and for their witness and service in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, for your whole church in our country, for its councils and leaders, especially for the most reverend Dr. P.C. Singh, our moderator, 
moderator of the Church of South India and Metropolitan of Mathoma Church, for the Most Reverend Dr. P. C. Singh, our Bishop, for Reverend Bruce Tangadurai, our Presbyter, and for all other ministers of your Church, that they may be faithful in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, that with all your people who have faithfully served you in this life, we also may share in the eternal joy of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hasten, Heavenly Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant these petitions which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we all stand and say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.
let us pray Accept, O God, the worship of our hearts and our lips, and give us grace to glorify you in our lives. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and rise again in glory. Amen. <laughs>